Dark Screen Games, a phoenix rising from six years worth of ashes, a collaborative effort that came out of nowhere, a visually pleasing couch multiplayer game that lets you play as many well-loved indie characters, a multitude of modes and arenas to choose from, and a soundtrack that enhances the gameplay. When the game is first started, it opens with a cinematic, which is the first initial reveal trailer that got released when news about this game spread across the entire internet. The animation in it flows beautifully, showing off the epic indie characters being sucked into portals. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> that fell off. <laughs> with a cinematic song that portrays the excitement audibly. After this gorgeous cinematic, one will stumble across the tutorial. In this, self-aware humor comes right out of the gate and lets you know that, hey, this game isn't that serious, you're just supposed to have fun with it. Leading you to learn the key features of bounty battle, chain combos, ultimate attacks, special attacks, double jump, jump dodge, and a feature that no one expected. Bounty points. Get it? Cause it's called bounty battle. Hey, you know how it be. <laughs> bounty points can buy minions, which can fight alongside with. <laughs> Bruh. Bunch of stuff fell from my dresser. Which can fight alongside you. However, if you spam attacks, you actually end up losing bounty points. Which, yes, you actually get penalized for button mashing by not only losing said bounty points, but by being dazed for multiple seconds, leaving you open to attacks. So if you know anybody who's gotten annoyed because somebody keeps using Ness's PK Fire from Smash way too much, I've got a solution for you. The current roster that doesn't include Ness, houses 30 characters, 23 of them from other developers and 7 from dark screen games themselves. 23 of them are Stargrove from The Ruin of the Reckless, The Prisoner from Dead Cells, and Super Combo Man from his self-titled game. Wow, way to be a narcissist, Super Combo Man. Hey guys, I'm Super Combo Man. I'm so cool that they named the game after me because that's all anybody knows me for. Rusty from SteamWorld Dig, Otis from Owlboy, Owl and Shammy's Owl gonna love this Owl one, Boy. Hermetic Champion from Tower of Samsara, The Penitent from Blasphemous, Rudy from Bubble Blasters, Gully from Battle Chases Nightmare, Captain Flinthook from Flinthook. At least it's half narcissistic and not super combo, man. Originally, I thought it was uh, like uh, Hollow Knight, but no. <laughs> Oddmar, Fish from Nuclear Throne. Tetraplock from Blocks That Matter. Shield Maiden from. Eared? Eater? 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 I. E eat is Harry from the Big Butcher, Thora from Jotun, Pankapu, the Unslain from Doko Took. Or is it Took? Honestly, no clue. Agent of Death from Death's Gambit. Trace from Axiom Verge. The Crusader from Darkest Dungeon. Sheriff Lone Star from Awesome Gods, so that's my boy right there. And Juan from Guacamelee. While the other seven are from dark screen games. Olaf, Azel, Atlas, Tyran, Lazarus, Lilith, and R-1812. Whoa, wait a minute, I didn't know you could build. Is this Minecraft? No, actually, it's Blocks That Matter Arena, a cube-driven world where 2D characters fight in a 3D space. Then there's Tower, a rocky terrain that screams solitude. Ruins, a fiery mess of Rome. Forest, a watery pool of destruction. Arcade, which is the same one from the tutorial. An open arcade cabinet that shows concept art on the screen, as well as a joystick that moves when you do. Owlboy Arena, grassy field filled with graves of the dead, while a chorus of joy is being played in the background. What am I, Italian? Hey! Flinthook Arena, a dark ship in space that proclaims adventure. Darkest Dungeon Arena, a name that literally means what it says because I can't see a thing. Guacamelee Arena, a desert town ringing with trumpets. Dead Cell Arena, host cells of chaos with jars hanging from the ceiling, which is something that was probably found off of Pinterest. Oh my gosh, have you seen my jars hanging from the ceiling? Great aesthetic for this jail cell. Big Butcher Arena, a metal hallway showcasing a big piece of machinery. Tower of Samsara Arena, the base of a mighty tower as you prevent any enemy foes from entering. Nuclear Throne Arena, an empty wasteland where heat is not just against the players, 
but in the environment. Axiom Verge Arena, a crimson ancient temple. Awesome not Arena, a floating platform subtly hinting at the fact that you will die because of bones protruding out of the arena. Probably not though. Again, looking a little too deep there, Oddmar Arena, a high risen circle arena where many foes do to death. While there are only 16 arenas, there are 6 game modes to choose. Count, Lifetime, Training, Challenge, Tournament. Count is based on the amount of lives you have. So basically if you have no lives, you've lost. Life is where you have to get a certain amount of kills to win. Unlike, you know, actual life. Time is where you fight until you run out of time. It's Pretty self-explanatory. Training is where the other characters are ragdoll you fight in the arcade, except it's a different color scheme. Tournament is where you beat all the foes, and in the process, you actually earn some skins. So no kids, you actually have to work for these skins. No using mommy's credit card on this one. What do you think this is, Fortnite? In conclusion, Bounty Battle is a- Combat feels really slow and clunky. Brawlhalla is better and it's free. No. Combat looks like- Go away. Bounty Battle! A sign of jokes. It doesn't look anything like you see in the trailer. Controls are unintuitive on a keyboard. I wait, hold on. And one Ow. can okay. change you um, on the keyboard. Yes, I'm playing fightings hey, get, with a keyboard. Get out of here! Bounty Battle! One of the worst video oh, games I've okay, ever played. Okay, Trust okay, me, no, run no, away! Okay, I understand. Zero yes, out of ten. yes, there's bad things with it. I get it, okay? Like, it has flaws, and... I, I understand. Remote play together is the only way to play online, and it feels awful. It's half-baked on all fronts. Okay, wait, but like, but, 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 the AI but I, okay, is not good at no, all. I was able to beat the highest level bots by just spamming light attack. The animations and hit registry are atrocious. The special moves are a bunch okay, of sparkle like, effects. But, but you, but you didn't think- I was looking forward to playing this game for so long, but unfortunately, the game's still quite buggy. I have no idea if they ever consider asking community for help to fix, then maybe it could go somewhere, but now it's pretty meh. Characters feel floaty and slippery and don't have very many moves to boot. Each character has a, a few directional inputs and a light slash heavy attack. Other than that, no. all the characters no. share no. basically the Please. same moves. No not other people's opinions. Please. This game Ow. looks horrible. Oh. Some of the promised content is I'm now back. being resold to us ah, as okay. DLC. Uh, can, I get it, okay. Ow. We done. <sighs> this game has disappointed me greatly, and that sucks because the source material games are all made with so much love and it just feels like a janky Flash game that was made in three days for an indie game jam. Best part of the game is the roster, but that isn't a compliment for a game rather than it is for the indie game characters they bought the rights to. Easily beat the hardest difficulty AI just by button mashing the light attack, which is a problem because there's no online except for the Steam remote play. Sound design is poor. The announcer sounds like someone trying to imitate an over the top WWE announcer. Bottom of the line, just don't buy this game unless there's some drastic improvements to it. I'd like to point out that this man played 12 minutes of this game and had all of this to say. Ugh. Ugh, please. No more other people's opinions, I get it. Generally, Bounty Battle is a fun-to-play local couch multiplayer game that's simple enough to learn, is visually appealing, includes plenty of variety with every aspect of the game, and answers the age-old question of who would really win in a fight to the death instead of having to trust death battle for that info. Despite the genuine fun I actually had, because I'm the one who played it for plus six hours instead of less than an hour than most of these people did. Criticisms were also revealed without even looking at the bad reviews. Just by playing the game in an objective and honest perspective, letting the game speak for itself, many notes were had. I gotta redo that. Many notes were had. Why aren't you separating? Many notes were had. There we go. These regard mostly the game mechanics. The few criticisms are as follows. First, there's no air recovery, meaning that say you grab somebody near a ledge and push them, they literally can't do anything about it. So basically, if you're grabbed at that point, there's not much you can do except parry it. But even then, that's a grab bag in and of itself. So since they can't do anything about it, please at least add an air recovery feature, Mr. Francois. Second, you can't exit out of the tutorial. Like, Come on. Third, 
Respawn time is seven seconds. It's too long. It should be at least three to four seconds max. It probably shouldn't even be that long, but if you were to cut that time in half, that would really help. Because currently, it ruins the flow of the game, especially if you only have two people playing. Fourth, most of the stages just don't have creative names, making the stage names look a little lazy. Ah yes, I can't wait to play Tower of Samsara Arena. I am so excited. Ah yes, I'm so excited to play Name of Developers Game Arena. I can't wait. Ah yes, I'm so pumped to play Subscribe Arena. Yeah! Ugh, I'm breaking a sweat from that. That's sad. Listen, Tower, Ruins, Arcade, and Forest. I know that they're not the most creative names, but these show that they at least tried. Six, you have to have teams on all the time. Do you know what? Fine, Bounty Battle, you can take that one. I don't care at this point. Now comes the biggest criticism, the minions. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the fact that Darkscreen basically wanted to make their own assist trophy, but it just, it doesn't flow right. It doesn't feel like the minions do a whole lot, and the minion effects aren't sometimes not even that obvious to begin with. And sure, some minions effects are completely obvious, but some, I still don't know what they actually do. Minions are fine in concept, but when the tutorial only says they fight alongside with you, it doesn't give me a good gauge as to what they actually contribute to the fight. Most of the time it never gives an indication that they're actually doing anything until the effect is present. So they just seem kind of pointless most of the time. Basically, if their cues were more obvious and it was obvious that an effect was being casted on the actual enemies, then it would be fine. Because if their cues were more obvious and they were more obvious for all of the minions and you could actually tell when the effect is actually being casted, then they wouldn't feel like unsupportive parents. Basically, minions either feel like they do nothing or they do too much. And the middle ground there is just not supported. Regarding the reviews, yes, yes all you, I'm getting to you. The common thread here was that people felt like the controls were janky or clumsy, which personally, I didn't feel that whatsoever, and honestly thought the combat was simple to learn and easy to master. But when you keep comparing it to Rivals of Aether, Brawlhalla, Indie Pogo, Super Smash Bros, Stick Fight, then you're not truly looking at the game objectively. Instead, you're comparing it to already well-loved and established titles that are already getting praise and already have gotten praise. Honestly, I think because of multiple delays for the game and a high expectation from multiple people, said people already had a sour taste in their mouth which infected the experience of the game. Instead of appreciating and recognizing that we don't get a lot of these games nowadays, it seems like Indie Pogo and then this game is like the only two real big ones. And I hope in the future that we actually get to see more and more of these indie collaborations, because I think in general, the concept is really cool. Obviously it's not original because Indie Pogo already did it, but I do appreciate that Bounty Battle tried and they tried something different. And I think that's the key here. They need to try something different in order for it to work. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. I learned about the game about a week before the actual release and because of that I had zero preconceived notions going into it. Which makes me feel like not a lot of people got that opportunity because it was built up so much. Bounty Battle shows the importance of looking at things objectively and to try things for yourself before making a conclusion and also not playing the game for less than an hour or not even half an hour and then make a bad review because you didn't actually try all of the game. You played it for five seconds, left a bad review. That's the other thing. It just feels like that this game got review bombed by somebody. I can't prove that, but if you look at the, the, the reviews, it, that's just how it feels. I played the game myself and made my own objective conclusions before I looked at any reviews. Not everyone is gonna like one specific thing due to unique tastes that we all have. What matters is giving it a fair shot for yourself, so that way you don't live in regret of truly not knowing if it was worth your time. Just because some people said it was bad. You know, the 13 people. <laughs> don't let negativity impact you in a bad way, but instead, let it inspire you and motivate you to look at it objectively.